The following program is an exclusive Disruption Networks production. It's Bowling for the Bahamas and Celebrity Bowling Challenge to benefit the Bahamas Disaster Relief Fund. Sunday, December 1st, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. AMF Pinorama Lanes, 1724 Genesee Street, Utica. Come have fun and enjoy a few games of bowling for a good cause. There will be prizes, food and drink specials, and some special challenges mixed in along the way. $20 per bowler or $100 per team includes two games and shoe rental. All proceeds go directly to the Bahamas Relief Foundation. That's Bowling for the Bahamas and Celebrity Bowling Challenge, presented by Disruption Network, Holy Pizzoli, and AMF Pinorama Lanes. Sunday, December 1st, 1724 Genesee Street, Utica. So you just bought your dream home, and now it's time to move. Let's face it, nobody likes to move. All the packing, unpacking, lifting, upstairs, downstairs, and broken everything, including your back. Let the professionals at EJA Moving Company take all the stress and pain out of your move. Competitively priced moving. Sunday, December 1st. Office moves and complete packing and unpacking services. They work with everybody to make it simple and easy for you to move and relocate. Call EJA Moving Company at 315-335-0516. When it's time to relocate, have EJA Moving do all the work for you. Hit them up online, ejamoving.com. Hey, Disruption Network. This is Mike Sacco, the general manager at Nye Volkswagen of Rome. If you don't know me by name, it's only because you have not received the best deal. There's only one reason to leave Utica, and that's to come see me in Rome and get the best deal on your next new, pre-owned, or certified VW. Mention that you heard this ad from Disruption Network and receive $250 off your next vehicle purchase. You'll know why our customers say, I love my Nye VW. Come see us at 5865 Rome Taberg Road in Rome or visit us online at nivwofrome.com. Want to know what's going on at the D? Hit up disruptionnetwork.net and check out our events calendar brought to you by the Events Co. Find out about upcoming guests, special events, concerts, show schedules, community activities, and more. Get connected at disruptionnetwork.net. That was abrupt. That was quick. <laughs> I got an itchy finger. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. We're awake here on Leveling Up. Um, I'm your host, Megan McGrogan. And if you're tuning in for the first time, this is our Leveling Up podcast in partnership with the Greater Utica Chamber of Commerce. This is the place to be to learn everything that's happening in Utica with our area businesses and beyond. So we're happy to have you joining us this afternoon. We're going to have a really exciting show because I have a guest who's usually in my shoes, Steve McMurray from WKTV. So I'm excited to have Steve with me. Uh, Steve is also a board member uh, for the Chamber of Commerce, and we are here to make an exciting announcement, which will be our finalists that we've selected for our business of the year. So you're in for a great show, and thank you for joining us. I just want to give a shout out to the Disruption Network sponsors, Nye Volkswagen of Rome, Utica Coffee Roasting Company, and Saranac. And also our chamber supporters uh, that support the chamber all year round, Gilroy Kern and Gilroy, MVHS, and Advanced Media New York. So thank you guys for all of your support. So as uh, per usual with the show, we'll get into a little bit of what has been going on lately with the chamber. Um, So first I wanted to, uh, well, I'm going to kind of do a dual dual picture here. So (laughs) if you tuned in for our last show, uh, Nick Unks and Ashley Moody, Dr. Nick and Dr. Ashley from Climb Chiropractic, uh, we're my guests, so if you missed that episode, please go check it out. We did that live on location at Climb Chiropractic, which was a lot of fun. Nick and Ashley are a great couple. Um, they are obviously in chiropractic care, uh, but have a really cool story about how they started their business in Utica. Uh, Ashley is from the area, Nick is not, and we go all the way through their journey and why they decided to start a business here in downtown Utica. So that picture is of me and Nick, and we're actually at the Business After Hours, which we also just hosted last week uh, at the odds so it was at 72 hosted by the comets and ucfc we had a lot of fun almost 200 people there at that um so it was a great business after hours and we hope everybody that joined us for that one uh comes again in november which will be at ma pulsey i'll tell you guys about that at the end of the show Um, but i wanted to give a shout out to phil and joe from the comet staff We've rebranded Business After Hours and tried to breathe some new life into it. So we want to thank them because they have really kind of joined our marketing team 
uh, to help us plan that along with Pamela Musty, who is the chair of our uh, membership council. So thank you guys for your help with the rebrand and we hope everybody who joined us had a great time at that uh, business after hours. Um, we also honored our uh, business person of the year, Tom Clark. So there's a picture of Tom, uh, me, Joni Grandy, who has been uh, a, an employee of Tom's for many, many years and very active in the community. Everybody probably recognizes Joni. Uh, and Daria Helmer to the left is the chair of our board. So we were so happy to present Tom with this award. Uh, Tom Clark is the chairman of Adirondack Bank, Adirondack Financial Services, and also of Matt Clark Restaurants. He owns many um, local McDonald's and does a ton for our community. So we had a lot of fun honoring Tom at a very nice event at Hearts Hill Inn. Scott and his team always do a great job. Uh, we also celebrated... Now, this is the second tour for Candace. <laughs> we celebrated Clearly Connected's new location. Uh, we were just celebrating her grand opening last year, and she's already expanded. So this is our second ribbon cutting uh, with Candace. Also, Assembly Member Marianne Buttonshawn is there with me. And we had a great time um, at their new location. They have a lot of space. Um, it's it, So she is a life coach. Uh, so they do coaching, but they also have a nice community space um, where they are going to do some yoga and different types of events. So please go check out Candace at Clearly Connected. She's located right on um, Ariskany Boulevard in Whitesboro. And then uh, we also welcomed Dr. Amelia, or Amela, I'm sorry, um, at Reeves Dental Practice. And they're located out on Middle Settlement Road. Uh, great dental practice. They also happen to be my dentist, so <laughs> obviously they do a good job. My teeth, my teeth are pretty straight. I think. Absolutely. Uh, well, that's orthodontist, but <laughs> they're pretty white. So Dr. Justin um, and his father, Dr. Glenn, uh, have had a great practice there. Dr. Glenn is retiring, so Dr. Amela is coming on board. So we had a great time welcoming her at their open house. And then let's see, what else did we do? Um, we had a couple other things going on. So you can, I can pull the picture. Yeah. A um, couple other things going on with the chamber. I didn't have a chance to uh, put the pictures up because we have a lot of pictures coming up for our announcements. Um, but we did also have our small business series uh, on October 16th. And our topic this time was uh, business structures. So we did legal structures. Maybe if you're looking to start a business, you know, what should you be structured as? What are the tax implications? So we had a great panel. Uh, we had a representative from Hancock Estabrook. Uh, we had Phil DiGiorgio. So those were our two attorneys. And then we also had uh, Justin and Sean from Universal Bookkeeper representing the accounting side of things. And it was a great panel. So if you're interested in learning more about those, you can always check out our upcoming um, small business events on our website, our new website, which just launched um, yesterday. So you can go check uh, out our upcoming events on that. Um, and then as far as other events that I attended, I had a great time at Margaritaville at the Stanley. If anybody's a Jimmy Buffett fan, that was a whole lot of fun. We went and checked out Margaritaville. Um, Oneida County Tourism also had their annual meeting last week and honored Rob Esch uh, with the Christopher DeCito Award. So we just want to say congratulations to Rob. A very well-deserved person to uh, receive that award. And Oneida County Tourism always does such a great job promoting our area. Um, Sarah Foster was a guest from Oneida County Tourism on one of my previous episodes, so you can go check that out. I believe it's episode three. So um, Sarah is great from Oneida County Tourism, and we had a really fun time at that event. Uh, then last but not least, have to show a picture of the little guy here because we went and took him on our first <laughs> trip to Lake Placid. Uh, so Ryan and I, we were talking about it before the show with um, Chicken. But he just went to Lake Placid for the first time, too. So Peter and Chicken both experienced <laughs> Lake Placid for the first time. Um, but we had a really good time. Lake Placid is one of our favorite places. We got engaged there, had our honeymoon there. So it was really fun to bring Peter. And he looks the part, doesn't he? Absolutely. I mean, That sweater I think... is top notch. That's awesome. Yeah. We have a future <laughs> Bob sweater on our hands, nice. I think. Um, so, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the recap of everything going on. And then I'm going to get into introducing my guest here sitting with me. I think everybody knows what he looks like, but <laughs> Steve McMurray. Um, so Steve McMurray is the general manager of WKTV. As I mentioned, he also is a board member with the Chamber of Commerce and happens to be the chair of our Publicity and Events Council. 
uh, which I mentioned we are going to make the announcement of our Business of the Year finalists today. Very exciting. Uh, but first, we want to get to know Steve a little bit more. So, right. Steve, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having Here me. Here he is. This is great. I want, you know, <laughs> first of all, I, I, the shameless plug, I want to say happy birthday to my 14-year-old son, Jack. Nice. And since this is my first podcast, he's going to think I'm even cooler than he thinks right now. Right, Z? <laughs> so thank you for that. To, to be cool in a teenager's eyes is oh, yeah. not easy. Uh, Jack, and, and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> your dad is cool in the first place, but I feel honored that you're my first, this is your first podcast, yes, and you're my guest, so yes. no, thank you really for cool. coming on, and I'm really excited. This I, is, am, uh, I am too, this is really cool, and, yeah. uh, and this is the first time I've been to, to Z's uh, hideout here, and uh, good stuff, yeah, good stuff. they do a great job, and for everybody who doesn't, I mean, you know, if you're not in pr- production, and video production, this probably looks pretty normal to you, but really behind us is a big green screen. Yep. Which is why we learned we cannot wear green. <laughs> or so you'll be, be able to see through me. Yeah, which is a cool cool. Halloween trick, but yeah. the other three hundred and sixty five <laughs> four days not the not what you want to do. No, so um yeah, I'm I'm general manager at uh, mm-hmm. WKTV. Uh, my career uh, has always been in Utica. Mm-hmm. I went to, uh, I was actually very lucky. I got hired at uh, WTR actually okay. um, back in 1995. I was a senior at SU and WTR was launching weekend news at the time mm-hmm. and they had hired someone to do sports and about a week before they launched the newscast, uh, that person basically took their name out of the running. Okay. So they're five days away from launching a newscast and don't oh. have a sports, a sports guy for lack of a better term. And so I had been interning there three years, mm-hmm. but better part of three years, and I was interning every Friday. So I got a call at uh, on, a, on a Tuesday, said, can you come down on a Wednesday? Sat on the set, read the sports cast, <laughs> and started on that Saturday. So And a star was born. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but you know what's, but what's interesting, so I have I've been doing this now so 25 years almost, and, and I'll have so many students say, you know, what did you put on your first resume tape? Tell me about your first interview. I'm like, well, I had a pulse, and I got hired, and that was about the gist. <laughs> So I, I didn't really have to make a tape. And they're like, what? And so I, I've been very fortunate. Um, mm-hmm. So I did sports. Uh, I, I did weekend sports, and it was a news photographer. And honestly, um, I love the news photography part. I work nights, mm-hmm. uh, so I got to cover a lot of spot news, a lot of breaking news. Oh, that's cool. Um, folks that may not know, I've been in the uh, Frankfurt Volunteer Fire Department for 20, yes, that's right. 28 years now. Um, I got in right out of high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that sort of emergency service stuff is in my blood. And mm-hmm. um, so I really liked working the night shift. And I was, I was considering dropping sports mm-hmm. and just doing the news full time. Uh, but then I was lucky enough to move over into the sports director role. Oh, cool. uh, so I was doing sports Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and it was great. And I did that for five years. And then uh, in 1999, at the end of 99, I'd actually got uh, I got married in October. Mm-hmm. And the to Carrie, to hi Carrie. Carrie. <laughs> Carrie's gonna think you're cool too for doing this. Well, right, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think Carrie. <laughs> uh, it, we celebrated 20 years last week, and nice. I, I still don't think she thinks I'm cool. You went but to it, Greece too. Right? We did. We did. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. That was a bucket list trip. But. Um, so she was working at, at UTR at the time, and our news director at the time, who was John Swan, mm-hmm. uh, left, and I basically was the senior man in the newsroom at 26 years old. Wow. And, uh, and so they, they offered me the news director spot. That's awesome. And, and I, was, I felt very fortunate to do it um, because I, you know, the background of, of shooting news for those years, mm-hmm. um, I felt I could make the transition. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did that. I was the news director and five and six o'clock anchor for two years. Uh, and then in '02, I was approached by the folks at, uh, at WKTV mm-hmm. uh, in, in July to come over and, and run their assignment desk because they were going through some restructuring. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vic Vetters was the news director but was yeah. also sort of the GM mm-hmm. of the CW affiliate at the time. Uh, so Jerry Walsh, who was the assistant news director and ran the desk, was moved up to the news director role. So okay. that created a, a spot for me. Um, and I got off the air, which was fine. I was totally cool with it. Mm-hmm. I, I grew a beard for a while. It's, <laughs> I, I, there is there is video that exists though of Wait, me. With, you can't be on the air with, with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you can now. It was this was, this was yeah. Late, this was back in the, this the late was, the late nineties, yeah. early two thousands. It was sort of. Right yeah, exactly. <laughs> sort of frowned upon. Um, so I did. A, I grew the goatee. It was all good to nice. go. Um, and then in in oh four. So about two years later, and and I was I was glad to get out of the news director role. Um, we were going through some some changes at at, at UTR that 
uh, were just very, very big changes. And so there were a lot of 70 hour work weeks and, and I, mm -hmm. I just needed to take a break from the managerial part of it mm -hmm. uh, and was fine if I never returned to the news director role. And then two <laughs> years later, uh, Jerry left and OK, we're moving you over to the role whether you want it or not. So and, and, which was fine. And, and I, you know, I learned a ton from Jerry and mm -hmm. Vic um, over there. And uh, and so I I did that from 2002. And then in uh, 2013, uh, when we were still Smith Media, our general manager was based in Burlington, Vermont. Okay. So they made me station manager in addition to the news director and five and six anchor. Mm -hmm. uh, then in 14, we were purchased by a, a company called Heartland Media, and we were their first station. Okay. So the general manager who was in Burlington, um, he went elsewhere. And so they only bought the Utica station. So at that point, they offered me the general manager spot. So from uh, March 21st to about August 14th of 2014, I was the general manager, news director. Oh, my God. Assignment editor and <laughs> five and six o'clock anchor. So I, I called my boss at the time. I'm like, I really need to fill one of these roles yeah. with a different human than me. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So so that's when we, we hired Jeremy Ryan as our news director. And he still holds that position that's today. Awesome. But. Um, yeah, so I've got, uh, I just celebrated, uh, it'll, so it'll be six years in March as the, as the wow. general manager. And how um, many years total? I've got to add all that up with KTV. So it'll be, um, it's 17 with wow. WKTV. Okay. I started in August of 002. So nice. I just celebrated, you know, a couple months ago, 17 years at uh, WKTV. So I've seen okay. a lot, a lot of folks come through the door and, and gone on to bigger and better things. Yep. But, uh, I've been very fortunate. Mm -hmm. I, I've been, uh, you know, in this business a lot of time, it's getting a foot in the door mm -hmm. and, um. You know, talking about the fire fire department, there was a good friend of mine. His name was Mark Harris. He was uh, he was the chief photographer at WTR, and so I come home my freshman year of college and was gonna just basically relax. And he's mm -hmm. like, uh, "Your internship starts with me on Monday." Okay, you know, whereas I, a lot of my friends at school had been applying for internships Couldn't and get in, them. you know interviewing for internships and getting get didn't get it. And meanwhile, you know, I went on a fire call and Monday ended up with an internship. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, and so you got Stroke of luck. right. So you get that foot in the door. Yep. And uh, and I, again, I've been very fortunate to, to be in the right place at the right time. And and um, I just felt that this was an opportunity that I, I couldn't pass up. Um, I still have. Uh, my hands a little bit in the newsroom. I still, yeah. still, my passion is news and, and sports. Um, you still get behind the anchor desk every once in a while. Every once you? in a while, yeah. you know, special events, heart, <laughs> heart run and Boilermaker, two, you know, the two nights the Hall only. Hall of Fame, right? Hall, yeah, Hall of Fame weekend. <laughs> I, you know, they, they send the old guy, take him out of retirement, and put me on Main Street in Cooperstown. And, um, but but it, it's been great. You know, I have there's more sales and revenue as part of this. Uh, mm -hmm part of this job, but I think that's a, a skill that uh, that quite honestly I, I really needed to have anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm and so it's been a great it's been a great uh, learning experience. I've got a great team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I look at some of my department heads, you know, Dave Streeter's our ops manager. He's been mm -hmm. there since the late nineties. Yeah. Uh, Tom McNichols, the chief engineer, was there I think in nineteen seventy five. Wow. Um so those guys I deal with them for the boilermaker. Right. Well, yeah. You know, and, and so when you look at that, like folks that uh, I mean Tom especially, I mean you're talking forty years at one one station you can't that's rare in small markets but you Definitely. can't put a you know that's priceless yeah. with, with tom and dave and then you know and then the other end you've got um you know heather lofgren is is, is a transplant to the area mm -hmm. um she's a business manager handles hr she does a great great job mm -hmm. i mentioned jeremy and then our newest department head uh is sort of a, and i, I feel you know, this, this is a good story for our area mm -hmm. uh uh Brittany Bean, she's from yes, New Hartford. Yeah, Brittany, she's yeah. from New Hartford originally. Uh, worked for five years in New York City, five years in Orlando. She actually worked for the Orlando Magic for a couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, and one day decided I want to come back home. I love that. And so I'm like, "Yep, we got a job, Lo mm -hmm. local sales manager." Mm -hmm. um, and then the general sales manager left about three months in, oh, geez. and so we just promoted her to general sales manager. But yeah. uh, you know. So she's been at the station. It'll be a year in February, but she's done so much already. Mm -hmm. But that, to me, as a local guy um, who just wants to see this area thrive, mm -hmm. to bring somebody back, and they wanted to come home, and 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 now is the time. I, I mean, yeah. I, I think there's a there's a sense of optimism, maybe cautious optimism, but certainly a sense of optimism when you look downtown and when you look at things going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember back to those days at shooting news in the mid '90s, mm -hmm. where there was no there was no sense of optimism. I mean, we were coming off the base, yeah. you know, when the base closed, Close, which yeah. was a huge, Gee. yeah, a huge punch in the stomach for mm -hmm. everybody. Not just Rome, not just Utica, the Valley. Everybody was in that. Uh, in that uh, tough position, but little by little, you know, 
the resiliency of this area, people pick themselves up by their bootstraps and mm-hmm. and, and and go forward. And and there's always going to be hurdles. There's always going to be bumps. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think uh, now is the time. And, and and Brittany has mentioned that to me. She was no other time had she when she came home said, "Wow, the area is vibrant. Yes. I'm making the move permanent." So and I love talking. So Brittany, I love that she's also involved in the community. I mean, she mm-hmm. goes out, she gets involved, and that I think is really important. Yeah. You know, Sarah and I talked about that when she was on, and Pam too about mm-hmm. Catalyst and like how you know Catalyst is our young professionals group, but. It, big piece of that is just networking. Right. And so a lot of people, they come back and they think there's nothing going on. Right. And then you get out and you start talking to people and there's literally, I mean, we can't get a breath. I mean, sure. There's so much happening. Um, so I love that Brittany has gotten involved and that's really what I think makes people become successful. Yeah. And I love that she said, you know, she said that to me too, I didn't feel the energy. And then I came back and it was there and yeah. that's what I was it's, looking for. It's palpable. And I think, you know, it's human nature. I think, you know, when I was in high school, I couldn't wait to get away, right? Mm-hmm. I couldn't wait. I graduated from Frankfurt and I was going to run, I was going to run as far away from Frankfurt yep. as I could get. And I got to Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And then came back. And then um, came back. You know, I only got to Oswego, so that's, uh, that's same, not you know, the same distance. And, and, but it's just, um, it's a great place to, to bring up your family. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my wife is a transplant. She lived in Rochester mm-hmm. uh, for, I mean, she grew up there. Uh, but, when we got married and and moved to Frankfurt, uh, you know, I, I tell people I, I, uh, I moved south because I moved from West Main Street to South Frankfurt. <laughs> Um, but you know, we've been embraced by the, she was been embraced by the, the town and the, the neighborhood. And, mm-hmm. and now, you know, when, when we first got married and she was Steve's wife, well now it's completely done a 180 and I'm, <laughs> Carrie's, I'm husband. Carrie's husband. And you know, I, I, I tell it every once in a while, like I, I run the TV station in town. I'm sort of a, you know, I like to think I've, I've got some cred, but, yeah. uh, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. We know Carrie wears the pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the last time I was right, me neither. But, yeah. Wait, didn't she have a joke about I feel like we just had a joke about this. Yeah, pro- probably. At Business After Hours, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, we love Carrie. So, so. And I do, too. No, I, like I said, 20 years in, um, uh, we went to Greece to celebrate the 20 years. And it's awesome. Been, it's been wonderful. And, I, and I've, you know, like I said, I... I want to see this area thrive. I want, you know, the, and, and I think there's a lot of good things going on. Still, a lot of work to be done. There will mm-hmm. always be work to be done. But mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, some of the businesses we're going to talk about today. Oh yeah. Um, you know, a lot of time it's taking a risk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I understand the hesitancy of some businesses to take a risk uh, around here because of the, the aforementioned punches in the stomach that mm-hmm. we took. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, a lot of times the entrepreneurship, I mean, you just got to take, I mean, look at these guys, you know, let's, let's take a building uh, on the east side and, and we're going to, we're going to make this a studio it's, and, yeah. and, and you've got to have the passion and you got to take, and you've got to have, and I'm not a risk taker. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, but my wife is mm-hmm. the house we bought. I mean, I walked in and I'm like, no way. And she's <laughs> like, this is going to be wonderful. Yeah. And we've made it ours. Yeah, and that was all because of her taking a risk. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, no, everything's got to be, you know, but, 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 but yeah. not her. So, well, uh, I think that good. that's, um, you know, that's a really important thing, point to make about entrepreneurs. And I think that you are seeing people are taking a lot of risks around here. Yeah. And Angela and I just had this discussion the other day. She's like, you're much more of a risk taker than me. I'm like, <laughs> let's launch this website. Like, let's go. Yep. But you kind of have to have that healthy balance. Yes. And I think we have the longevity of a lot of businesses in our community, again, that we're going to talk about mm-hmm. today. Um, they've been around for a long time. They've, you know, kind of they've taken risks, but they've also had that longevity to prove. Sure. And then you have some newer businesses like in our Catalyst Rising Business Award that are very new, but they've really put it out there. And I think that you're seeing some of those businesses that maybe would have been recognized last year in Catalyst in that. So that category is um, zero to five years in business. Right, right. Now they're coming out in the sixth, seventh year in business and they're still around and they're still doing great. Yep. And you really have to make it over that hump. But I think it's really cool to see people making it over that hump. Yep. And I say it at every ribbon cutting. I feel like a broken record. <laughs> but when we have expansions, that's what's so cool to me. When you see, you know, okay, so I've only, I've been in the position, it'll be five years pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Or was was five years. Four years. I've okay. been with the chamber five years. But, um, you know, being in the position for four years and now seeing people that were doing second ribbon cuttings yeah. and third ribbon cuttings yep. for, uh, that's so cool to yeah, me. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I think that um, we appreciate you being in the area and we appreciate <laughs> well, that you. you're, you've you stayed here and all you do for the chamber and really to promote everything. And I think you have such a cool story and WKTV is there, you know, in good times and in bad for this community. Yeah. Um, 70 so, years. It'll, it'll be 70 years December 1st that they signed on the air. That's crazy.
crazy. So that's uh, it's one of the oldest oldest stations in the country. That's so cool. Um, yeah, and, and you know, our <laughs> one of our toughest tasks. I was telling someone this this morning is you know, you used to know who your competition was, right? For us, it was the other TV stations mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. town, the newspaper, the radio stations, what have you. Well, now it's them plus everything else that's out there. You yep. know, is streaming people and, like. The, the disruption, like, <laughs> uh, no, but uh, but w- but what? And so the business has changed that way. But what hasn't changed is it's all about the content, right? Yeah, content yeah. is king. It the distribution method of it, the platforms are always going to change, mm-hmm. and you have to you have to change with the times, mm-hmm. right? So I mean, we are on Hulu and Apple TV and all these other things that ten years ago no one no one knew about no one yeah. knew about. Um, but it's it's going to go back to the content and, and and what stories are you telling and it's all about relevance, mm-hmm. right? And so our strategy has to be, um, you know, when you're talking to viewers is not only can you, do you have to see this, you can't afford not to watch us, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's that's what we strive yep. for every day. They can't afford not to watch us. Mm-hmm. They have to, to, to know how to live, whether it's the weather, uh, which changes all the time, uh, what's going on in their community? Because as your viewers change, you know, the, the market skews older. I don't mm-hmm. think that surprises anybody. But you know, folks that in their twenties didn't didn't watch the news. Mm-hmm. Well, now they're in their thirties with, with a child mm-hmm. and paying taxes. And oh wow, maybe I should pay attention to yep. this legislation that's going on, exactly. which isn't a sexy story by any stretch of the imagination. But it's important. But it's important to know. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think we're we're seeing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've got to be the what the biggest change in the business. I get this asked all the time. What's the biggest change in the business? The biggest change is there's no more deadlines, mm-hmm. right? We still have a four o'clock deadline for the five o'clock news. Five for six, ten for eleven, etc. Well, now that's true. The yeah. deadline is right now. Exactly. Every deadline is right now. Or so from that standpoint, there is no deadline, mm-hmm. right? When something happens, people want to know about it yesterday. Now and on social media, right? right it's got to be. It's got to be done yesterday mm-hmm. because if you don't have them, go somebody else. It does. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the challenge from the traditional media side is, you know. Agnes Crabapple from Kasuth Ave can put something <laughs> on her Facebook page and then just take it down if it's wrong. Yeah. If we go to air with something wrong, well, that's our credibility. Mm-hmm. Number one, FCC issues, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it, so, so the social and digital side of the house, um, I'm not going to say it's a blessing and a curse, but you've got to. Com- it's got to complement your traditional mm-hmm. and supplement your digital at some, or your traditional at some point. Mm-hmm. And so there's that. That relationship, yeah. There, how does it all work um, together? And it's and it's got to be it's got to be constant. Mm-hmm. So you know, one thing we strive for the motto is, I don't want to be first. I want to be right. Mm-hmm. If we're also first, that's great. Mm-hmm. But you've got to be right. Yeah. Right. Let yeah, somebody that's a else. Good monitor to live let, by, I think. let somebody else. You know, come at you with with the first thing and then have to retract it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd rather be right and do it do it once. Yeah. Um, and, and that's and that's how you have that's how you have to operate. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's it's a challenge because there's always that next whether yep. it's technology or what there's Platform, that next yeah. next biggest thing out there, and you've gotta you've gotta embrace it because mm-hmm. if you don't, your complacency will send you into oblivion. Yep. That's just the way and it goes. And then you're irrelevant. Then yeah. you're irrelevant, mm-hmm. and that's and that's the worst thing mm-hmm. is to be irrelevant. Yeah. You know, I'd rather be bashed than be irrelevant. Yeah. Definitely. And so. I, I don't I don't envy you guys for, for yeah. how I mean, or, or these guys, I mean, you, you constantly have to be, you know, looking at what's going yeah. on and what's new. Gotta so be fresh. Right. I, I think that you're you're doing a great job. Well, and you. I watch the news every day. <laughs> <laughs> and even Ryan does, too, now. <laughs> we didn't used to. But, yeah. you know, like you said, you get older and, you know, you, you want to be in the know. And I think you guys yeah. do a great job of that. Absolutely. So. And and some of the some of the treatment of stories we do. I mean, we still, you know, our old school Pound in the pavement. We yeah. still listen to the police scanner. We still and, and from that. Type but you of have stuff, to. That's like a lost art. You know. It, it is. And people I th- lose sight of that. Yeah. And I think what it is is that you know not that if it bleeds it leads and blood and gore, but that's not what you're after. But you know, it's the story behind the story. Mm-hmm. Like you know, we had a a mayor at one time in this city when I first started, um, who had a media blackout, mm-hmm. and and the reasoning behind a lot of it was. The method, the madness, I guess I would say for him was, well, if if they're not reporting on crime mm-hmm. and tragic fires, then maybe folks will think there isn't crime or tragic fires. Mm-hmm. And 
and it's like, but that's not what's happening. Mm-hmm. And so when you cover those stories, it's more than just, oh, this is terrible that this happened. Mm-hmm. It, you know, sometimes you're digging deeper. Why did this happen? Mm-hmm. Is, can you prevent something like this from happening again? Mm-hmm. And I think what, another thing we lose sight of too is, you know, the root word of journalist is journal. Mm-hmm. We're charting local history, which exactly, is an incredibly, yes. which is an incredibly important responsibility, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I try to. Inv- um, implore my younger folks Mm -hmm. to really embrace it's a huge responsibility Mm -hmm. um this isn't just coming to work and okay i'm gonna write my scripts and tell uh, tell a story i mean this you're charting this area's i love that i love that way of looking at it and and it's it's a big responsibility Mm -hmm. um and and quite honestly sometimes we'll get uh brand new folks that they they don't understand that Mm -hmm. and maybe and and it's a it's a shocking moment think well geez maybe this isn't for me Mm -hmm. um because you gotta have thick skin yeah. Right. You, yep. You've got to have thick skin to mm-hmm. be in this business because even when we're right, we're wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, and there's picked, people trying to catch you. Right. Absolutely. Everybody yep. wants that gotcha, gotcha moment. And mm-hmm. I think one of the knocks against folks in the media or journal, whatever, is that you know, like I put my pants on one leg at a time too. Yeah. <laughs> and just because you know, I'm not on anymore, but just because I'm on TV doesn't mean I think I know more than you. Mm-hmm. And that's what some folks, I, I think, they're thinking. Yeah. Oh, well, he's an expert, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and shoot holes in what he has to say. I'm like. No, listen, You're dude. I'm a real I'm, person. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a blue collar dude from Frankfurt. Yep. Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just like you. But yeah, definitely. It, it's, a, it's a process to get there. But yeah. So well, that's about me. Steve, we can talk. <laughs> no, I we could talk, and I wish we could talk all day oh. about this. But I know we have to get to our announcements. But I yes. would love to have you back. I mean, you have such a local insight and the history piece of things. Like, I would love to get more into that. Okay. I, you Absolutely. know, that is so. I think that is really something that people don't think about when right. they think of what you do, and I think that that's like hit the nail on the head. I mean, that is so uh, such a vital part of what yeah. you do. So, uh, absolutely. Um, okay, so we are going to move on. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, but again, thank you for oh, sharing your, no, thank you for your history, just... and um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love to have you back on, and I know these guys are pumped that you, this is your first podcast that you're on, <laughs> and um, it's really cool to see to see you on this platform, too. Oh, well, so, thank you. Um, okay. I don't look thinner or younger, though. You, to- <laughs> you, you told me you had the thin guy camera. Well, I look old in this thing, too. I'm like, yeah, this is terrible lighting in here i swear to god i don't look this old in room. you want to hear a real funny story when i was I, I think i had just gone back on the air at ktv so 07 08 and my barber hi b said uh do me a favor don't put a credit that your hair is done by me I said, that's fair <laughs> completely fair <laughs> hey maybe you can come out with like a shining product or something. <laughs> Jeez, it's too funny oh, okay so uh your barber is not a finalist <laughs> <laughs> no he's not <laughs> All right, so I know you guys are really looking forward to yeah. finding out the finalist announcement. So we are going to get right into it. Um, really quick, I will just throw up um, all the information will be up on our website. Uh, again, greaterutikachamber.org. We did just launch a new one yesterday. Bear with us. We're not fully promoting it yet, as with any website. Soft we to, opening. Yeah, soft opening of our website. So you're hearing it here first. Um, so the Business of the Year Awards information will all be up on our website following the podcast, and you'll be able to purchase tickets, view the finalists. Um, and also check out the sponsorships that we have. So I just wanted to throw that up quick. Um, so we're going to get into the first category. And I'm taking this one, right, Steve? Yep. Okay. So our first category is going to be a not-for-profit under 50 employees. Um, so not-for-profit uh, under 50, we had eight. So, well, actually, let's back up a little bit. So in total, we had 33 nominations for the Business of the Year Awards. So then what those 33 nominations uh, or nominees have to do is they fill out a comprehensive form, pick categories, they come back to us, and then we review them as the executive committee and pick the finalists. So that's how we've gotten here today. So 33 amazing nominations came in, and a really tough job by the executive committee and Catalyst um, since they decide their category, uh, but really tough job for these guys. So just want to thank our executive committee for all of their time and Catalyst, um, their executive committee for their time that they've put into selecting these. So again, 33 total in our first category, not for profit under 50, there were eight nominees. Um, so a great number of nominees for this. So we are going to get right into it and I will pick, pull up, pick 11. So there are our finalists for this category. Uh, So the Community Foundation, Stephen Swan, Humane Society, and the Root Farm. So all great organizations. And again, really tough um, 
tough to go through all these and pick. It's it's really hard, yeah. um, really and, and hard to, job. And then to pick a winner out of those. Yeah, three. and so then the, we we will ultimately unveil the winner of all these at our Business of the Year awards, uh, which are December twelfth at Hearts Hill Inn. So. Out of these, now the executive committee has to go back there and pick a winner. Um, so the Community Foundation um, of Herkimer and Oneida Counties, Alicia Dix is the um, president and CEO of that. Uh, they do so many great things in the community. It's it's really hard to cover them all, but just just swallow this one. So they have a growing endowment valued at $150 million. Wow. Okay. So their job and their, their focus, which I think is really cool, um, they've been recognized nationwide for this new innovative approach that they're doing. So instead of being a reactive uh, grant-making organization, they're really focusing on uh, resources that are significant, or putting their resources towards significant, long-standing community challenges, which is a departure from their traditional reactive grant-making. Um, so if you've been around the Community Foundation lately or paid attention to their initiatives um, you will see that they are really trying to, you know, find the needs of the community, figure out strategies that they can really make an impact long term. Um, so they have don't I mean, they've invested more than 75 million in their nonprofit partners alone um, since the 1950s, which I think is amazing. And they pool our community resources and then, again, reinvest them back into uh, programs and initiatives that improve the community's quality of life. Yeah. Um, so they always do a fantastic job. Um, Stephen Swan Humane Society, Diane Broccoli is the executive director there. Um, they're committed to the prevention of cruelty, abuse, and neglect of animals throughout their uh, animal adoption center. Um, and feel free to chime in and see if you have anything to uh, yeah, add. I, I, <laughs> I mean, can just I, talk here all day. No, no, absolutely. Community Foundation, again, I think you, you know, you, uh, how you were describing them is, uh, you know, they've been awarded for some cutting edge work. And, mm -hmm. uh, and again, the key word in there is the growing endowment, mm -hmm. which means folks are believing in what they're doing and continuing to, yes. to, to donate. Yeah. And Stephen Swan, obviously, you know, you can't say enough about, uh, what they do to control the, to help control mm -hmm. the, the, the pet population and, and just find some, some homes for some, for some very deserving uh, animals. They come up, uh, I think it's once a month on our five o'clock news. Yes. And, uh, and, and bring all they bring an animal. <laughs> and, you know, you could tell when the dog walks in the, into the station because everybody converges around the front door. Yeah. And, uh, and we've, we've had staff members that, Honestly, have adopted folks as, sure. as the dogs come in. You Every time I mean? you guys so. have one on, Kristen will have the dog. I'm like, okay, we need to adopt that dog. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but they, so they take in around 2,000 animals um, each yeah. year, and that's you know a, a variety of animals. Um, but they're they're they worked really hard to become a no kill shelter, um, and they haven't actually received any government funding. So they're right. solely relying on the generosity of this community. And Diane and her staff do a fantastic job. Uh, we've done a couple of ribbon cuttings over there. Right. They they um, unveil new kennels, which are beautiful. I mean, they really just do a great job at placing these pets in homes um, and, and obviously with the, that no-kill mission. So um, thank you, Diane, for all you do for the community with your staff. Um, and then lastly, the Root Farm. Peter Blanchfield is the new um, executive director. So we are still getting to know Peter. Jeremy, uh, who was our executive director, we did a lot of work when Jeremy was there. Um, with the uh, new zip line, we did the ribbon right, cutting for right. that, which was a lot of fun. Um, so they have done a lot to partner with local businesses to promote their team building programs, which in turn help to fund the root farms uh, initiatives. Um, so they're part of um, their affiliate of Upstate Caring Partners. If you guys haven't been up there, you've got to check it out. I mean, it's, it's it's an amazing facility, and it's a hidden gem, right? And I think that's one thing that we're we're hoping that will happen. Um, as an offshoot of our of this the awards luncheon is that folks that may not uh, you know not top of mind with some of these places will do some more research mm -hmm. and and find oh wow this is all right here in our community so that, that again uh, root farms a hidden gem so yeah they they do a great job up there and so um they they're focused on healing people of all ages and abilities through the power of equine agricultural and recreational experiences so uh, those are our finalists in that category so again um, I'll just pull it up one more time 11 is Community Foundation Stephen Swan and the Root Farm so congratulations to all of you guys okay and so I've got next right you do uh, and this is not-for-profit with over 50. over 50 employees and we had um, we had five uh, nominees in the uh, uh, nominations submitted, uh, mm -hmm. and so the three finalists are 
Uh, so you got a drum roll over there? <laughs> yeah, I know. We need a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> and there they are, Munson Williams, uh, Proctor Arts Institute, Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield, and uh, and um, Hospice and Palliative Care. And, and again, uh, the committee is going to have a very difficult time picking a, a, a top uh, a winner in this mm -hmm. category. Um, Munson Williams, I think, is is one of those. Uh, uh, institutions that folks take for granted. It's always been here and it's celebrating a hundred years this year. Um, but I, I think we don't realize how fortunate we are to have uh, an arts museum of this caliber uh, right on Genesee Street in downtown Utica. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was telling the story the other day, a, a friend of mine came in with his family from DC, did some research and went right to the, the Munster Institute and basically said what, that compares with any they've seen across the country. So I think that's one thing you got to remember, folks, is that you know a lot of these things we take for granted because, oh, they've always been there, and, and they're more than just a sidewalk art show. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute, uh, the, the CEO and president over there is Anna Tobit D'Ambrosio. Uh, their mission statement to create transform, transformational arts experiences that cultivate curiosity and creativity, enlighten, educate, and inspire. And that says a mouthful, mm -hmm. um, but there's so much... Uh, to the Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute. Uh, and uh, a couple things that to know about them, uh, and, uh, MWPAI is a steward of, great, of a great cultural resource that we will enrich and preserve. Uh, they believe in the power of the arts to serve the entire community uh, and see our art collection programs and classes as offering ex uh, essential experiences in that. Um, large community enrichment quotient uh, and their commitment to excellence as well. Um, Again, MWPAI, very deserving mm -hmm. of, the no of the nomination. Uh, Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, again, uh, provides uh, health care coverage, including commercial safety net, which is uh, Child Health Plus and Medicaid, Medicare, and individual products to a million and a half members in 39 of New York's 62 counties. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are big. Um, Christopher Booth is the CEO over there, and they've been serving upstate New York since 1934. Um, the charitable organizations that they partner oh, with, so many. Uh, too many to list. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, there's just, uh, I, I'm, on my piece of paper, I have a couple dozen. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, again, just um, one of the top top employers also with more than 3,500 employees um, in those mm -hmm. 39 uh, of 62 counties. Companies committed to attracting and retaining a diverse workforce to foster innovation and better serve its members. Also encourages employees to engage in their communities by mm -hmm. providing paid volunteer time off as one of the men That's benefits. That's huge. That is huge, and that is a rarity. Mm -hmm. Many businesses used to do that as a feel-good initiative you know, 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and it, as the economic climate became tougher, they zeroed that out, but Excel yeah. Blue Cross Blue Shield did not do that, so kudos to them. And we should mention, although Christopher Booth is a CEO, many people know Eve Vandewal, Eve Vandewal absolutely. locally um, is their regional, um, I believe she's regional vice president. Yeah. Sorry, Eve, if I'm getting your title wrong. Yeah. Um, but Eve does a great job and very recognizable as somebody who, who commits a lot to this community. Absolutely. Eve is on so many boards and organizations to better the community. Uh, mm -hmm. Very, uh, very recognizable, obviously, as you said. Mm -hmm. And finally, hospice and palliative care. Uh, Sh Shannon, I don't know how to pronounce Shannon's last name. I, I think was it's Kaya. I was I just Kaya. talking with somebody the other day, and Shannon came up, and I'm like, I hope I'm saying yeah. this right, but it's you know, Kaya. I think. All right. Well, Shannon Kaya is the CEO, and, and she's great. She hasn't been there all that long, mm -hmm. um, but uh, jumped in with both feet to continue the good work that hospice uh, does. Um, WKTV, we've done the hospice telethon for many years, um, which. Honestly, the hospice telethon is more about the awareness of their services, uh, not just uh, and the monetar monetary aspect of it is, I would say, secondary. Mm -hmm. uh, because unfortunately, you know, an organization like hospice, you use it at your worst time in your life. Mm -hmm. um, but they just do so much for folks uh, from end of life care to the families uh, mm -hmm. who have uh, people in end of life care. So again, um, hospice, just a great organization. Mm -hmm. Um, the, one of their mottos, it's not about dying, it's about living until you die. And, mm -hmm. and that, that says a mouthful as well. So yep. congratulations to the folks at hospice. Yes. Uh, so again, the three finalists for the non-for-profit, over 50, uh, 50 employees are Hospice and Palliative Care, Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute, and, and Excellus, Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield. Congratulations. congratulations. The winner announced December 12th. 12th. Stay yep. tuned, as it were. <laughs> Stay tuned, right. Um, okay, so congratulations to those guys. So I have the next uh, category is for-profit uh, business. Oh, you do have a drum roll. <laughs> we found the drum See, roll. See, we found a drum roll here. Okay, so drum roll, please, Z. <laughs> oh, boy. That was Wait, nice. 
Now I, I hit the wrong button. Hang on. Gotta go back to my pictures here. Oh my god. And cute. And this is why this is they the time in the, the traditional media. Yeah. <laughs> this is the time in the traditional media. Z, we're gonna take a commercial break. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Roll commercial. <laughs> uh, okay, so for-profit business with 50 employees or fewer. Our finalists are Deerfield Place, Hunt Real Estate, and Total Solutions. So congratulations to these finalists. Um, Deerfield Place, Erica Champlin is the local property manager. Uh, they provide luxury living um, featuring townhouses and apartments. And if you guys have not been over to there to see these, they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, we had a business after hours there earlier this year. Um, their mission is to add value to the lives of everyone they serve by excelling in the development, financing, and management of real estate. Um, so again, luxury community living. Um, they're pet friendly and have no breed restrictions, which is huge. Yeah. Uh, and they really are very dedicated to our local community, and they really do support the chamber a lot and a lot of uh, local organizations. So they provide really unique amenities to the Utica area, uh, located, as their name says, in Deerfield. Um, and I thought it was cool that they they did have a challenge of reaching occupancy, but they were able to go from 46% to 96% occupancy this year. Very so that's awesome. Absolutely. So congratulations to your field uh, place. Uh, Hunt Real Estate is uh, led by Peter Hunt, the president um, of Hunt Real Estate. Also should, should mention that Tess Johnson, who works for Hunt, uh, is on our Catalyst Steering Committee. And she does a lot to contribute to the chamber. Um, they're committed to um, their communities and the residents that are within them. Uh, many companies popping up, one of the challenges they've faced, um, they're offering cheaper ways to buy and sell property that, that is cutting out the realtor, which is really shortchanging their clients in their eyes. Um, so they're, they're stepping up and adding more home buying services to become a one-stop shop, which I think is great. Um, they certainly support and give back to the local community. And they, they're, one of their things that they wanted us to know is they like to contribute to the society in which they operate by providing the highest quality real estate services available in the marketplace. Well, it goes back, like we said, that you know to adapt to, cha to the changing marketplace, and they've done that. You know, but they were founded in 1911. Yes. So they've done something right in <laughs> more than 100 years. Exactly. Yeah, adapt. So congratulations Family to, to owned. those. Absolutely. So awesome, and congratulations to Hunt. Then last but certainly not least is Total Solutions, and Total Solutions is led by Big Mike Morell, the president, who many people know Big Mike. Um, he's Big Mike. Everybody he's knows Big Mike. Big Mike. Uh, but Big Mike was the chair of our board, which is really cool to see him in this pool because when you are on our board, you cannot be nominated. Right, your company's not eligible. So so it's great to see him in here, and we're really happy that he was chosen as a um, as a finalist. I don't get a vote in these, by the way. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. <laughs> There's a couple people in here that I you know know really well. So the executive director does not get does a not, vote. Nope. This is all um, picked by our executive committee, and again, the Catalyst executive committee on the kind of uh, Switzerland neutral party, right? <laughs> um, I have to pull all the information. So Big Mike is, a, is an easy one for me to talk about, again, as he was the chair of our board. Um, but he um, is a managed IT provider. So he designs, implements, and maintains IT solutions for his clients. Um, some cool things that he does. So he has applied the key concepts of lean manufacturing uh, specifically with the concept of Kaizen, which is continuous improvement. So uh, they really take a look at their internal operations um, and their service to their clients and figure out ways to really kind of trim the fat and make sure that they are um, approaching everything efficiently and driving costs down for them and their clients. Yeah, truly cutting edge. And when we were talking earlier about, uh, you know, folks not afraid to take a risk, mm -hmm. I mean, Big Mike has jumped into a, you know, to an area that uh, that can be very cutthroat and he's done you know that company's done very very well yes. so uh, kudos to those folks and a ton of charitable organizations yeah. that he supports uh, including the chamber and he's been serving the community for over 21 years um, and they focus exclusively on small to mid-sized businesses which is really important because half of our membership is uh, zero to five employees in a right. small business so or i'm sorry under 50 employees right, right, right. <laughs> in a meant. small business. Um, so congratulations to Big Mike. And again, all of our finalists in that category, uh, Total Solutions, Hunt Real Estate, and Deerfield Place. So congratulations to you guys. Yes, absolutely. So I have the next one, and that is uh, for-profit businesses with over 50 mm -hmm. employees. And uh, we'll, we'll go right to the three finalists. Z, yes? Oh. I am really not doing well with this. <laughs> Steve, Steve would have fired me if I was no. in any position. <laughs> no, no. Steve's like, you're getting the axe. No, 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 no. Listen, there are many. Like, 
you're fine. Trust well, but me. the anchors don't typically do the teleprompter too. So, te- right? Ten. No, they do. Oh, they, they do. do? Okay. Oh, yeah. Listen, sort of like Mike, Mike, big Mike's the lean manufacturing. Yeah, we have. Uh, <laughs> We, we do our own, anchors do their own prompters, but I will tell you a quick story about that. When I was at, at WTR, I had a foot pedal, but the chair I had was too high. I couldn't reach it, so we had to do some adjusting. But anyway, um, so again, the finalists for uh, for-profit business with over 50 employees, there, I, there they are. Congratulations. StaffWorks, uh, Rising Phoenix Holdings Corp., which is, uh, which is Adjusters International, and Sanger Town Square. So a little bit about, about these, these companies uh, very, very impressive. Uh, Staff works, of course, led by uh, its president, Anita Vitulo. Mm-hmm. Um, they are their mission statement is the perfect fit, creating flexible solutions for talent acquisition challenges in the 21st century economy. They were founded in uh, in 1994, and uh, again, their list of charitable organizations too many to list, uh, just dozens. Uh, but obviously, uh, for folks aware of, Anita has a passion for helping animals mm-hmm. and uh, un- unmatched passion, I will say, and has given uh, monetarily, I can't even tell you how much, to all area shelters. So mm-hmm. not just Stephen Swan, but ones in the Valley and in Rome and even down into Otsego County. Uh, and-, and her mission continues uh, in that. So congratulations to her on that. But again, as far as staff works, the or the business she owns, uh, still locally owned, originated 25 years ago, uh, and again, proven staffing services business model resulting in central New York dominance with nine service offices. And what's interesting is that they find employees for all ranges of business. Mm-hmm. You know, and as the the economy changes and the business world changes, it gets tougher to find spe- people with specific yes. uh, skills. And yep. yet, they seem to, to to find a way to do it. So mm-hmm. again. Uh, congratulations to, to the folks at Staff Works. I just have to call out too that uh, these numbers are really impressive. I mean, their current Staff Works funds at the Community Foundation are thirteen million dollars. No, one point um, three. And well, the current Staff. Oh, Works thirteen. Funds, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> their fund originated though. So far, they've provided one point three million in grants wow. in Central New York, which I think is amazing. Yeah. So that is that is awesome. Yeah, absolutely, and it's recognized the largest living donor fund at the foundation. That's awesome. So congratulations to them. Next up, uh, Rising Phoenix Holdings Corporation, which is Adjusters International. Uh, Ron Cacharo is the president and CEO. They provide professional public insurance adjusting, preparedness, and disaster recovery consulting services to uh, the private sector, government, and not-for-profit uh, clients. And again, we always come from a position of ad- advocacy mm-hmm. for those impacted by disaster, which is uh, incredibly important because when folks are at the lowest point after mm-hmm. a disaster, you need someone that can advocate for you, and that's what Adjusters International is doing. They are founded uh, in 1985. Uh, the Adjusters International predecessor, however, was Baslow, Levin, and Cacharo, and that was in 1908. Yeah. So been around a long, long time. Um, and again, Mr. Cacharo, uh, when they were formed as a nationwide entity, yeah. he advocated strongly to establish this nationwide headquarters in right Utica. here in Utica. And there's uh, 45, uh, they've expanded their offices three times. They employ over 200 staff. So again, congratulations awesome. to them. Um, and, uh, you know, they bring homegrown tenacity and leadership to communities recovering from every major disaster mm-hmm. since 1985 including the 9-11 terrorist attacks, yes. Superstorm Sandy, and, and various floods that we've had here in the Mohawk Valley over the past few years as yeah. well. It was, I don't know if you caught the in the challenges, because we had, we had everybody, you know, submit chan- right. some challenges. Um, in 2017, they was a tough year for them. They, they responded to multiple hurricanes, including managing the largest FEMA temporary housing repair program in history in Puerto Rico, which was right. over 100,000 homes. That's right. Um, and also 1.2 million in post-disaster housing inspections throughout the U.S. So that's really, yeah, really amazing. Exactly. Again, making national headlines and H and headquarters right here in Utica. Uh, and the final finalist in this category for profit over 50, Sanger Town Square. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they're led by Jeffrey Law, and they were founded in July of 1980. Wow. So for some folks, you know, think of the new mall, but they've been around 40 years. Uh, and as oh God, don't say. That. <laughs> You know, so as that's not far after my. <laughs> um, but congratulate, you know, again, the retail, any retail owner will tell you that the retail is a very challenging business, and yet 
they mm -hmm. still find a way uh, t to be successful and, and keep it going. In the internet age, too. Absolutely, know. absolutely. And, and uh, right now they're home to 65 businesses and bringing over 1,100 jobs mm -hmm. to Oneida County. Uh, and it's in the last four years over 250,000 square feet, so a quarter million square feet has been remodeled for 17 new or newly expanded mm -hmm. uh, retailers. But also they, numeral, numerous charitable organizations that they're part of, including American Heart Association, Multiple Sclerosis, uh, just Abraham House, just to name mm -hmm. uh, Safe Schools Milwaukee, just to name a few. So again, congratulations, mm -hmm. good work to the folks at Sanger Town Square. So and again, pins, they add, they just had, they had pins, pins, which is they're, awesome. Yep, in there which is a, been a in there. yeah, a brand new concept and bringing you know something that's been in other parts of the country, bringing it to the Milwaukee mm -hmm. Valley, which is which is awesome as well. So Sanger Town Square, Staff Works, and uh, uh, Adjusters International, now known as Rising Phoenix Holdings. So again, congratulations for the finalists in the yeah. for-profit, uh, over fifty employees. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Okay, so our last but not least category. I say that way too often. i got to get out of this lap, but last <laughs> but not least thing. Um, so this is our Catalyst Rising Business category. So this category is fairly new uh, to the Business of the Year Awards. Uh, we added it. This will be our third year, I believe. Um, and why we added it, we felt that, you know, one of the criteria for the Business of the Year nominations uh, is staying power. And so we, what we found was it was really tough when we were looking at all these things and having staying power be something, there were a lot of new businesses that were doing a lot of great things. And to have that criteria as one of them made it a little difficult to be able to honor them. Uh, so the Catalyst Young Professionals group said, well, we can honor them though. They're young professionals, young businesses, not necessarily young professionally owned businesses, <laughs> uh, but young businesses meaning zero to five years um, in existence. Sure. So this is a nice way to recognize those newer businesses that are doing great things in our area. And there are plenty. So the Catalyst group uh, selects these uh, nominations, or these finalists, and also the winner. Um, so their uh, executive committee went through all these. So again, uh, thank you guys for your time. And I'm excited to announce out of the nine nominees, uh, these three finalists. Please. Got it on got the last it. There try. You go. <laughs> <laughs> if at first you don't succeed. Try. And we're not even drinking beer today. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we're not. Still on the clock. Still on the coffee. <laughs> okay, so congratulations to the D, the Disruption Network, which Crazy. we're on today. Yep, Again, good. I don't get a vote, so I'm on <laughs> Um Universal Bookkeeper and Upstate Empire Fitness, three amazing new companies. Uh, this was such a tough, I mean, these guys had a really tough decision. We had a very long, very long meeting to go through all of these. Um, because it is, like we alluded to earlier in the show, uh, the commitment that entrepreneurs are making to this community is really unfounded. I mean, it's, it's amazing right yeah. now. So very tough category to be in. Uh, and these guys are, are, are great examples of businesses that are just knocking out of the park straight out of the gate. Um, so the first one, the Disruption Network, uh, Todd Williams is the president, of course, Z uh, behind the screens today. Um, and Chicken was here earlier. What's it? Mike, Mike O'Connor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike. Um, so Anthony Donaldson, everybody uh, knows Z. Again, Todd Williams and Mike O'Connor. Um, so they are a web, webcasting and podcasting service provider. They also handle some social media marketing, video production, and advertising. Um, in three short years, they've uh, dealt with restructuring their business model, um, loss of major social media platforms that they were working on, rearrangement of partners. So a lot of challenges in their uh, first couple years in business, but they have persevered. Um, they uh, combine modern social media, video advertising, um, and messaging to get um, the word out for a lot of local businesses. And they have a lot of different shows that they put on. You can see all of those on disruptionnetwork.net. Um, one of their core beliefs is to give back to the community and to people in general. Uh, they're passionate about telling stories, inspiring, and educating people. They believe in what they promote and do everything that they can to, pro to help the people, businesses, and organizations they work with succeed, uh, which is definitely ev evident as they um, help produce the show today. Absolutely. No, and, and congratulations at all kidding aside, we were here earlier. I'm like, did, is this true that they or did they slip this one in? No, they, were, <laughs> they, they absolutely are a finalist and they do a great job. And, yep. uh, and congratulations, fellas, and good luck. Yep. Uh, and, you know, again, we'll find out the winner. But we have yep. two more to, to talk we about. We do have two more to talk about. Um, and so Universal Bookkeeper and Upstate Empire Fitness are the other two finalists. Um, so Justin Miller um, is the CEO. 
COO and CPA, um, led by Justin and also his wife, Beth Miller. Um, so they have a great story, and I love this because it's similar to Ryan's story. I mean, they they kind of did this as a side hustle in their current jobs or in their in their previous jobs and then turned it into a full-time business. So uh, their challenge that obviously was one of them is taking a part-time company to a full-time operation and they've added uh, three additional full-time employees in two years, which is like a good problem to have, but right. those people starting out know that that is very difficult to overcome. And Willing to take a risk, right? Converting from the side hustle to the main, that's that's a big risk, it's but a they, huge risk. they took it, and congratulations. And uh, they're very innovative. They provide accounting remotely, which is huge for a lot of these small businesses. They have a ton of charitable organizations that they've already uh, contributed to. Uh, a few of them, hospital hospice which is one of our other finalists handshake city the children's museum Kristen's fund um the hospice of shenango county so a couple hospice uh, organizations yep. um and they love seeing new startup businesses thrive in utica a lot of their clients are small businesses um, they do a lot more than taxes they actually uh, serve as remote cfos and consultants for a lot of their uh, clients and something else that i wanted to mention too that they actually didn't put on here but when it says uh, seeing startup businesses thrive here in utica they're part of a group uh, that's through our gym, which is a lot of business owners go to our gym. So uh, John, our owner at Mohawk Valley Wellness, started a little group that's kind of a growth-minded entrepreneurs, and it's really cool that they're a part of that as well. You know, and that's part of our small, small business seminar was the, you know, obviously bookkeeping and accounting is incredibly important, but if you're the creative side of a business and you want to get into a business because you have this creativity, you may not be blessed with the patience to have to, to do accounting. Yet you Ryan, can't have a business getter, without it. <laughs> well, I'm just <laughs> not naming names, uh, but <laughs> but you know that's it's an incredibly important service. It's and huge. so and so to have that and, and having them take pride in a small startup uh, makes it all that much better. Yeah, you you definitely have to you know trust the professionals, and these guys are great at what they do, helping small businesses. So congratulations to uh, Justin and Beth. And then lastly, Upstate Empire Fitness. So we did a great ribbon cutting uh, for owners Brian and Alyssa Devins. They have a 24-hour access fitness facility, which I think is huge for people who are busy. Um, they have personal and group training, nutrition coaching, protein smoothies, virtual fitness training, which is also very cool. They have daycare, tanning, and the industry's newest and advertisements for local businesses. Um, so they deliver above industry standards to their members at an affordable rate. Um, they are over, they were overwhelmed with an influx of new members when they first opened, so they've actually already expanded and changed the layout in sure. the facility, which I know a lot of people that go there have commented on how positive that has been. Um, so that's awesome that they adapted quickly because they just were founded in September of 2018, so that's hardly even a year. Right, and it's all about a adaptation. I mean, mm -hmm. people's changing lifestyles, you know. We see it in our business. You know, who watches news at 5 o'clock in the morning? Well, you know what? There's people who want to watch news at 4 o'clock in the morning. Exactly. So same with working out. Yeah, yeah there may be folks that are working out at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because mm -hmm. that's the window they have to do it. Yep. And so you've got to accommodate, and that's what and that's what uh, Upstate yeah. Empire did. So and congratulations. Family-owned and operated. I know they have other family that's involved in the operations of the business, too. Um, and they, you know, live busy lives, so they want to make sure that people have every tool accessible to them. They know they're busy. They know everybody else is busy. So how can they create all the tools to make sure people are living a healthy lifestyle? Um, and they plan to continue to improve the facility and their services. They're refusing to remain complacent in a science-driven field, and they're always looking for ways to improve and reinvest in the gym. Um, and the digital trainer thing is big, too. I know talking with them at the ribbon cutting, you know, they, they had to convert. They had a lot of online clients. Yep. They're having... Online clients and people coming in the door and bridging the gap between the two of those, I think they've done a fantastic job. And I love talking with Brian and Alyssa at the ribbon cutting about clients that they had coming from all over for their grand opening, which right. was really cool because they have a lot of online clients. So bringing people to our area as well. Absolutely. So um, congratulations again to the Disruption Network, Universal Bookkeeper, and Upstate Empire Fitness. And again, so, uh, you know, De December 12th, the finalists, the, yep. the winners will be named, but quite honestly, and you're going to hear this and it sounds cliche, but they're all winners, right? They are. And, and perhaps the biggest winner is the community around here because this is just, this is a great cross section of some of the best that the area has to mm -hmm. offer. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, again, congratulations to all the finalists. Yes, that, all 15 right up here. Exactly. Yep. And that is, you know, that's, 
this is the tough part now for the committee. All mm-hmm. right, go pick the winners on this. I know. <laughs> so it's very tough. The committee and will have their work tough, but that's that's a good problem to have. It is. That's it a is. great problem to have. And I also want to you know make mention of all the people who completed the comprehensive nomination forms. We appreciate your time. We know that you guys are all busy. And what is really cool about this process is, of course, we have to pick the finalists. We ultimately have to pick a winner. But what's really neat is by having this information in front of us and having the people review it that do review it, which is our executive committee, which is you know 10 individuals that are very plugged into the community, they get to know your business, whether Absolutely. you're a finalist or winner or not. Um, it's really a great process. It's a great process for our staff as well to know what's going on in the community. And it helps us plug people in and connect everybody. So it's, it's a great process. Right. And we want to thank everybody for their time that they've put into it. Absolutely. Part of the ch- part of the chamber's role is to connect businesses to other businesses. Mm-hmm. And so if your executive committee can learn that much more about all these businesses uh, in our community, mm-hmm. it just makes the chamber that much more pertinent in, yes. in carrying it out its mission mm-hmm. to help local businesses help each other. And, and, mm-hmm. and it's, a, it's, it's a no-brainer, it really is. And, that, uh, and again, uh, the finalists, just some of the best that the area has to mm-hmm. offer, uh, and even some of the, the ones that didn't make it into the finalist category, just top-notch. So we're very, very blessed yes. in this business community. So um, just to reiterate where we go from here, so the, uh, the finalists will then be taken into consideration and winners will be chosen, and we unveil the winners at our Business of the Year Awards Luncheon, which is Thursday, December 12th. Um, again, that link, greaterutikachamber.org. All of this information will be posted there immediately after the show. Um, you'll have an opportunity to purchase sponsorships and tickets. Um, a great way to congratulate all the finalists. And um, I should mention, too, what the format of that luncheon is. Yep. So we start that off at 11 o'clock with uh, beer and wine sampling. <laughs> what luncheon can you go to where you get beer and <laughs> wine sampling? Come on. We have a lot of fun. Um, and we have holiday music, too. So right. we're going to have holiday music played during that networking hour. So it's a great way Get out of the office a little bit early, network with some of the finalists, network with um, other people that are attending. And then the award show starts at noon. And I say award show because we do do this much like the Grammys. Right. So we will now be interviewing all of these finalists uh, and getting to know their business more. And we will present a video with, with each category with a little you know um, summary of each yep. finalist. And then we will ultimately unveil the winner in that video. So that's how we do the show. It's really fun. Uh, we try to keep it going and get everybody back to work. Although yep. you had beer and wine, so maybe you want to have a fun afternoon <laughs> off. Um, but we really you're try right to in keep the middle of the holiday light. season. Yep. You're right in the middle of the holiday season, so go to work in the morning and then come to our event and 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 see where see where the day takes you. But it, it's it's a very well done. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it doesn't drag on till mm-hmm. well into the afternoon. It's very very well done, very tight mm-hmm. uh, deadlines, and because we understand you know we are a, a business organization. Yes. Um, but it's it's great, and it, it's just an opportunity uh, to see some folks that you hadn't seen in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Plenty room at Hearts Hill to do that and uh, it really is just a, a great day mm-hmm. uh, to learn more about some new businesses especially some of the Catalyst finalists um, but also rediscover some of the ones who've been here for so many years yes. that quite honestly like I mentioned before I think we might take for granted yes. uh, because they've always been here and mm-hmm. you know what have you but uh, so congratulations again it's yes. uh, this was this was cool to unveil it this way yeah we had uh, a lot of fun doing absolutely, it yeah. absolutely absolutely Um, And so if you guys have any questions about any of that, of course, all of our contact information is on the website, but we hope that you'll join us. And again, you know, you can't really, you know, sometimes we take these events for granted as staff, Mm -hmm. you know, we put them on a lot and, and, you know, we, we lose sometimes the, the purpose of having them. And not only is this great to recognize our winners, but it's again, like you said, a great opportunity to get in the room with your fellow businesses and really network and show that, you know, get to know each other because you really need to know all the businesses in the area as a local business. Face to face conversation are a lost art they are they just are they you know are. we're also busy everybody's got everything on their phone and they can talk but there's nothing like if you're in the sales business there is nothing like a face-to-face mm-hmm. conversation to strike up a, a new conversation go in a different direction um, it's always harder to say no to a sale in yep. person. <laughs> so, so just be there uh, be in person and, yep. and it's uh, and we promise it uh, you'll you'll Thank us that you did. Yeah, you'll have a good time. Yep. So um, just to close up, so a couple things coming up with the Chamber. We have our Business After Hours coming up on November 14th. It's $10 for members. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive if you're not a member. But please, anybody is welcome to come to these. They're a great way to see yep. some local businesses and see what they provide. Again, back to that face-to-face networking. That's November 14th at M.A. Polsey, which is right in the business park. They have a beautiful office there. So please join us on November 14th. 
Uh, that's from 5 to 7. And then we have a couple of ribbon cuttings. So getting in, back into celebrating anniversaries, I know we talked about a couple during our finalist presentation. Um, but on November 8th at 4.30, New York Sash is celebrating their 30th anniversary. Our board member, Scott Hayes, and his wife, Jill, have had a great business over there in Whitesboro. So please join us for that. Again, anybody's welcome to come to these. On November 15th at 1 o'clock, we are celebrating the grand opening of the neighborhoods at Acacia Village. November 20th, um, we are celebrating, let's see, I have new location. In, oh, it's Hunt Real Estate. Hunt Real Estate, one of our finalists at 4.30, their new location. And then November 21st at uh, 10 a.m. at Ramon's Bakery, which my stomach is excited for. <laughs> they have amazing donuts and donolis. Right. You have to have a donoli. Um, so we're really excited to be celebrating all those upcoming ribbon cuttings. A busy month in November. That's right. A uh, great time to get out and meet some of these businesses before the holidays. And as always, we recap all these on our Facebook page so you can go check out uh, the Facebook Live videos that we do at the ribbon cuttings. And then also afterwards, we post all the pictures. So, But if you want to meet us in person again, November 14th at MA Pulsey Business After Hours, great way to get out for a couple hours and network with Absolutely. some local business people. So. Absolutely. One of the, again, one of the foundations of the, of the chamber is the opportunity to network and and, and and business after hours are the are the best way yes. to do it. Uh, not a huge time commitment. No, no. Um, you don't have to stay the whole time. <laughs> absolutely, you know, go there, have a you know, have a, have a beverage, a uh, couple conversations with folks uh, that maybe you haven't seen in a while, or some new folks you've never met. Mm -hmm. uh, that that'd be perfect. And then you can be on your way in yeah. forty five minutes if you want. But it's uh, yeah, great events and kudos to you and the staff for putting those on and and being as successful as they are. Yeah. And thank you, Steve, for being oh, my guest this today. Was this was so much fun. And we hope you guys had fun tuning in. Congratulations again to all of our finalists. And as always, you can find this episode on our website, greaterutikachamber.org, on all of the Disruption Network uh, platforms. So we hope that you'll tune in to another show soon. And please share this episode. Subscribe to uh, the show if you enjoyed the episode today. And we look forward to bringing you some new and exciting things coming up with our 10th guest, which will be... <coughs> Z Anthony Donaldson <laughs> and he's going to wear a green shirt so it should be fun exactly. uh, but Z is going to be my next guest we're going to be doing our 10th show which is a, a pretty big milestone. milestone doesn't sound Absolutely. like a lot but it is so what better time to bring in Z and learn a little bit more about how he's leveled up uh, in, in Disruption Network. So we're really excited to have Z come on. And I've known Z for a long time. I'm sure we're going to have a few UCs, right, Z? <laughs> we have to. We have to for old time's sake. Um, so we hope you guys will tune into the next show. And thanks again for tuning in today. It's Bowling for the Bahamas and Celebrity Bowling Challenge to benefit the Bahamas Disaster Relief Fund. Sunday, December 1st, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. AMF Panorama Lanes, 1724 Genesee Street, Utica. Come have fun and enjoy a few games of bowling for a good cause. There will be prizes, food and drink specials, and some special challenges mixed in along the way. $20 per bowler or $100 per team includes two games and shoe rental. All proceeds go directly to the Bahamas Relief Foundation. That's Bowling for the Bahamas and Celebrity Bowling Challenge, presented by Disruption Network, Holy Pizzoli, and AMF Panorama Lanes. Sunday, December 1st, 1724 Genesee Street, Utica. So you just bought your dream home, and now it's time to move. Let's face it, nobody likes to move. All the packing, unpacking, lifting, upstairs, downstairs, and broken everything, including your back. Let the professionals at EJA Moving Company take all the stress and pain out of your move. Competitively priced moving, relocation services, office moves, and complete packing and unpacking services. They work with everybody to make it simple and easy for you to move and relocate. Call EJA Moving Company at 315-335-0516. When it's time to relocate, have EJA Moving do all the work for you. Hit them up online, ejamoving.com. Hey, Disruption Network. This is Mike Sacco, the general manager at Nye Volkswagen of Rome. If you don't know me by name, it's only because you have not received the best deal. There's only one reason to leave Utica, and that's to come see me in Rome and get the best deal on your next new, pre-owned, or certified VW. Mention that you heard this ad from Disruption Network and receive $250 off your next vehicle purchase. You'll know why our customers say, I love my Nye VW. Come see us at 5865 Rome Taborg Road in Rome or visit us online at nivwofrome.com.
Want to know what's going on at the D? Hit up DisruptionNetwork.net and check out our events calendar brought to you by the Events Co. Find out about upcoming guests, special events, concerts, show schedules, community activities, and more. Get connected at DisruptionNetwork.net.